Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to start on a new Pi game. And this game is going to be a variation of the game called Snake. And for this one, it starts off on a basic start menu that has the title of the game. It keeps track of the high score. And then it prompts the user to start the game by pressing the space bar. So if I press the space bar, then we can go ahead and start. And for this game, I have a black square that I can control by moving the arrow keys. And the goal of this game is to collect the red dots while avoiding the purple bombs that appear. So let me go ahead and collect a couple, and then I can show you what happens whenever I touch one of the bombs. Okay, and let's say the player touches one of the bombs. Then what it's going to do, it's going to bring you back to the menu, it'll keep track of your high score, and then it'll prompt the user to start again. Let me go ahead and play one more time, and this time I'm going to try to get a score greater than 6, so that I can show you that it updates the high score. Okay, and I got seven points this time, so let me go ahead and run into one of the bombs. And we can see for the high score part, it updated to seven. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this using Python's Pi game. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start by setting up the basic Pi game window, and then we'll start working on some of the different objects. So whenever we're making a Pi game, we're always gonna start by saying import Pi game. And if you want to shorten this, you can do import pi game as, and then maybe something like PG if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it as pi game. Next, we're also going to import something from the random library since we're going to be using that a couple times in the game. So we're going to say from random import rand int. So the main way we're going to be using this is to pick a new random location for the red dot whenever the player collects it. Next, we're going to say pi game dot init and then parentheses so this will initialize pi game we're going to define the width and the height of our screen we're going to say width is equal to 500 and then we're going to say height is equal to 500 as well and then we're going to define the window so we're going to say win so this is just a variable name is equal to pi game dot display dot set mode Inside the parentheses will be the dimensions of our window. So that's going to be the value for width and then the value for height. After that, we're going to say pi game dot display dot set underscore caption. And inside the parentheses will be the caption you want to set. So in this case, I'm just going to say snake. So the set underscore caption part is going to change the text that appears in the upper left hand part of the screen, like you can see up here. The next thing we're going to do is define some colors that we're going to be using in the game. And I'm going to start by making a comment. So I'm going to say hashtag and then colors. So by putting this symbol in front of the word colors, it makes it a comment. And whenever the game gets run, it's not going to actually run this line of code. But it's helpful for the programmer when they're going back to see what the different sections are. So now we're going to go ahead and define some colors. The first one is going to be red. So we're going to say red is equal to. And then we're going to put the color code. So for red, the color code is 255, comma, 0, comma, 0. And if you don't know, the first part of it is the red value, the second part is the green value, and the third part is the blue value. The next one is going to be green, so we're going to say green is equal to, and then for the parentheses, it's going to be 0 for the red part, 255 for the green part, and 0 for the blue part. The next color is going to be purple. And that one's going to be a combination of red and blue. So we're going to have 255 for the red, 0 for the green, and 255 for the blue. And the last color is going to be black. So we're going to say black is equal to. And for black, the color code is 0, 0, and 0. The next thing we're going to do is make a while loop that will control the main action of the game. I'm going to start off with a comment, though. So I'm going to say hashtag and then main loop. Down below here, I'm going to define a variable. I'm going to say run is equal to true. And then for my while loop, I'm going to say while run. The first thing I'm going to do inside this while loop is I'm going to say pi game dot time dot delay. And for this part, I'm going to put 60. 
So this is a small delay time that will happen whenever the loop repeats. After that, we're going to set it up so that whenever the user clicks on the X part of the window, it closes the game. To do that, we're going to say for event in pygame dot event dot get and then parentheses if event dot type is equal to pygame dot quit. So the event pygame.quit occurs whenever the user clicks on the X part of the window. And what we want to do whenever that happens is we want to set run equal to false. Then outside the function, we want to actually close the game by saying pygame.quit. So what we have so far is a while loop that as long as the run variable is equal to true, it's going to repeat the code that we put inside here. And then while it's looping, it's going to be looking for a quit event, which happens whenever the user clicks on the X of the window. And when that happens, we're going to set run equal to false. And I noticed for this one, we need a capital F for that. So we're going to set run equal to false. And when that happens, it's going to break this loop here. And it'll close the game by saying pygame.quit. Okay, and there's just a few more things we have to do to set up a basic window for pygame. The next thing we're going to work on is a redraw function. And this will redraw all the objects on the screen once we get to that point. So we're actually going to define that function outside the loop. So first I'm going to start with a comment and I'm going to say redraw function. And then we're going to be defining this function by saying def for define. The name of our function will be redraw. And for now we're just going to put a couple different things inside this function. The first thing we're going to say is win dot fill. And then we're going to fill the screen with green. And then after that, we're going to say pygame.display.update. And now we're going to go back in the while loop. And in the same vertical line as the for event and pygame.time.display, we're going to call our function by saying redraw with parentheses. OK, so the code we have so far will set up a basic pygame window with a green background. Let's go and run the program and make sure that's working. OK, and we can see that we have a basic background. For the caption, we can see that it's set to snake. And then for the background color, it's green. If you want to change the dimensions of the window, then you can just do this right here. So let's say instead of 500, we'll change it to 750. And now if I run the program, I see I still have the same window. But now the dimensions are 750 by 750. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, we're going to start drawing some of the objects on the screen and setting up a movement system. All right, so I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.